Hey, Ed, you can come on right up here. Everybody can stand right here so we can all see you. <laughs> Um, there are, uh, we are missing one fella. He is out right now and we do have two part-time that, um, help with the trash rollback. They are not here either, but these guys, they maintain all the streets, the sidewalks, mow the parks. Um, if Ed needs help with the accesses, they help there. They help, um, all the other department heads, uh, the community center, uh, they work really close with them. So, uh, I, again, just thank all for everything that y'all do. And uh, they work seven days a week as well, so they don't get much time off either. So I just want to say thank y'all for everything that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you again for all you do. Um, beautification. <clears throat> One other thing that we do is we work with the Beautification and Enhancement Committee, and I'm going to invite Evelyn up here. Um, she's going to be handing out the certificates today, but um, our chair lady is um, Sandy Monroe. She does a really good job. Um, they, like I said, they work with the facilities and the grounds department. Uh, they do plannings. They were in charge of the uh, mural painting last year. Uh, they have another one getting ready to start in two weeks. Um, like I said, they do a lot for the town, try to make it pretty, keep it up. So uh, I want to go ahead and get Evelyn up here and let her do the certificates. And then I do believe we're going to get a mural update mm -hmm. as well. Yes, yes. Um, hello. The Beautification and uh, Enhancement Committee has nominated for the Business of the Month Nautical Bow. Are they here to receive their award? <laughs> I'm sorry that they're not. Uh, the home of the month has been awarded to the, F the Wilders family, and they are here. Please come up. Thank you so much. Please. Yep. Uh, good evening. So I'm Michael Hill. I'm part of the Beautification and Enhancement Committee, and Sandy could not be here tonight, so I just wanted to give you a quick update. Uh, we met with the artist on Monday uh, over at Kinston Avenue, if you're not uh, aware of where the um, next mural is going to be. It's the Kinston Avenue bathroom and shower complex. So we kind of got all on the same page. She outlined what she was going to do and how she was going to do it and what needed to be done. So we were able to do that and uh, meeting with Chris as well. He was big help. Uh, so she is planning on right now the 18th of this month to begin work. Uh, she feels like it's going to take about two weeks, maybe two and a half weeks, uh, just depending on the weather. And... I believe that's about it. But I would like to say one thing about with Chris and his maintenance workers is we work very closely together and those people and every one of his people have helped us immeasurably uh, in everything that we have done. They've been invaluable. So we couldn't have done what we've done without them. So, but anyway, we're getting ready to have a mural again. So in the next couple of weeks, if you're stopped by there, say hello to her. Her name is Jennifer and she is awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 
to the um, the home of the month. How do, your last name is Wenders. So it's I don't know. It's probably been about a year and a half ago. I was like going to sneak out of town for a little bit <laughs> and sitting in this little Irish pub. And we, um, someone looks over and they were like, did, did you say you're from Surf City? I was like, huh? And he's like, we're from Surf City. So that's how me and the Wenders actually met was in, at a little Irish pub a couple hours away. Oh, oh, oh. Um, some wine. Jesus, Jesus would approve. Um, but thank you for such a good job on your yard and keeping it up. It's a very nice yard and we appreciate the home of the month and the business of the month. So please come feel free to stay and enjoy our meeting. Um, so at this time I'd like to um, adopt the agenda. So I need a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve uh, the agenda. I need a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried to approve the agenda. Next item is um, approval of the consent agenda. And I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries to approve the consent agenda. Um, and we are at public comments. Now we'll call on Carla to call upon Daniel Blevins. So I'm, I'm here to make a comment on, on something that's got me pretty, pretty upset. As a son of a veteran, three-tour veteran, and seeing this and hearing the story about this, you guys know who it is, and I'm not, gonna, I'm not allowed to address specifically by name the person by rule. So we're just going to call him the city member of council. A city member of council, in my opinion, has chosen to mock, humiliate, and try to intimidate a concerned local 80-year-old veteran who continued to oppose the job this council member was doing. A t-shirt was made and passed around mocking the words used by the 80-year-old veteran who was coming to the island for 70 years and has been a homeowner for over 20. This sends a direct message, not just to him, but also sends a message to the other residents who, if you oppose this council member by speaking up to target, you'll be a target of ridicule and intimidation. One of my kids told me the other day, this is why people don't get engaged in local politics. If they speak their mind, they're in fear of intimidation or retaliation. This is a form of retaliation. I'm also calling the council to vote on to censor this council member for actions not becoming the standards of Sur City. The divide this creates in a community can be significant. I'm here to call on this council member to resign. And I want you to go home and I want you to think about what this signi signifies. If the council member chooses not to resign, I will be applying for a recall vote and going to our local residents for it with a petition and to do so, and it will be submitted to the election board. In the light of all this, we'll come together and come out by all media involved. Let me be clear. No town leader should ever mock or bully a Surf City resident again because they voice opposition. I have agreed and disagreed about many policies over the years but never have I once felt compelled enough to come here to ask anybody to resign. Almost every conversation I've ever had has been in private, but because this was made public, I feel this is a public, needs to be addressed publicly. There are many who have reached out to me over this post in regards to this topic and all residents will become aware before the next meeting. I will invite all of them and we will address this if it's not done. The actions of the council members the actions of the council member are beneath the office in which he holds. Make no mistake about this. He is not a martyr sticking up for town employees. The town employees do an amazing job and we're not the ones being called out. If you don't think this is a big issue, I want you to take a moment and imagine this being one of your elderly parents who showed opposition or concern for the community they live in. And one of those town leaders made a t-shirt so that other people can wear it and laugh at them. That's what this signifies. If you have a shirt at home, if you're a town member 
or a resident or a town employee, I, I, I hope you throw it away because this doesn't signify what Surf City is about. Thank you. Larry Rice. I want to address, first of all, my name is Larry Rice. I live at 712 Cockle Street, Surf City. I call it Surf City, but it's actually outside of the town limits. Um, I've been a resident for 45 years. I moved here in 1978. I have been very appreciative of our councils. And in the past, our councils have been very engaged with the town. Um, there have been some comments on social media that have reference to certain parts of the city that have mentioned that they are a ghetto. They are a northern portion of our city. Um, there is not a north surf city. There is not a south surf city. There is not a Shugart surf city. There is surf city, the surf city that I love. And with the actions that have been shown our council is here to unite this city. It's not here to divide the city. And with the actions that I think have occurred, the division is getting much, much larger. This is a childish rebuttal to a statement that was made by a citizen that is allowed by the First Amendment to speak their voice. Very unprofessional and very hurtful to me as a resident of town of Surf City. I have a very, very deep feeling in my heart for Surf City, and this has wounded it. We do not need to divide our town. We need to unite it, and let's try to move forward. I think a public apology, if nothing else, is in order. Thank you. Mickey Tucker. Good afternoon. Mickey Tucker, 1222 South Shore Drive. Uh, I came across the bridge June 11th, 1971. Have been here over 50 years. I have traveled to over 104 countries throughout the world. And I always come back to Surf City and say, why do I ever go anywhere? This is the most beautiful place. And it's not because of the water or the sand. It is because of the citizens. The citizens are the heart and the soul of Surf City. We are what make it the place where people come back. We welcome everyone with open arms. We have values that we love everybody, and that's why Surf City is Surf City. That's why people vacation here, that's why tourists come here, that's why everybody wants to live here. We had a week ago one of the most beautiful exhibits this town has ever put on, and I was so delighted when I saw it, because it could have been just just a flash in the pan. It was beautifully, professionally, and in every way, the flow of the exhibit was beautiful. That is what Surf City is. We've had some name calling. That should have never happened. But now, I'm going to say this. Some of the streets really are bad. Some of the grounds really are bad. The parks are fine, but the residential areas need some help. The feeling I have been getting, and I've spoken on this for three years, I worked the streets for six weeks by myself, shoveling rocks and sweeping by myself from 8 to 10 every morning and asked the town to come help me. No one came. It feels like the most important thing right now to Surf City is money from parking and tourism. Well, guess what? That's not the heart and soul. The citizens are the heart and soul. And our residential areas need to be respected and need to be looked after. I'm very disappointed in the response. 
of the remarks that were made. And again, along with Mr. Daniel and Larry, very, I felt so disrespected because I love Surf City. And that wasn't just to one person, that was to all of us who are citizens of this town. <coughs> Notice I got off track and spoke from the heart. A municipality is here, is established to protect the citizens and provide residents. Oh my gosh, goodbye. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Heather Allen. Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Allen. I live in Waterside. I've said this before and I'll say it again. A lot of people, including my family, we moved to Surf, C Surf City or are moving to Surf City because Surf City reminds us of the towns um, where we came from, what those towns used to look like. And uh, the town I used to, I grew up in, it was a super cute little beach town. It was clean, it was safe. It was a good place to raise your family. And very quickly, I had to watch all those good attributes just kind of go by the wayside. Um, if, you know, now it's like, it's disgusting and it's why we moved 3,000 miles away. And in my opinion, a huge reason for the downfall of a lot of these cities all starts with homeless encampments and what homeless encampments bring to their town. So, um, uh, you know, what comes with these towns. First you see one, that's where it all starts. It starts with one tent, then you blink, and then it's two, five, ten, and if I say hundreds, I'm not exaggerating. That's what it, I've seen with my own eyes. And what comes with these are lots and lots of trash. That's like the least of your problems is the trash. And then drugs and needles all over the place, used needles on the beach, children's playgrounds, you name it, I've seen it. Um, and a lot of times crime. And so, to my surprise, I've lived here for th uh, three years. When I'm driving down the 17, and then I turned on the 210 to what you first see is like, welcome to Surf City. It wasn't just me, everybody saw it. You look to the left, and there's one tent, there's a homeless tent. And so in my mind, I'm thinking like, you know, I know how this plays out because I've seen it played out, and it, it does worry me because I just, I've talked to business owners, and what they said is people who are living in these tents, um, you know, they'll sit there in front of their business and they'll scream, and you know pull their pants down so i know you guys are business owners i don't think you would appreciate that if someone was doing in front of your business um so i did meet with the chief of police i was impressed because i asked to meet with him on a tuesday and he sat down with me on a thursday and he said he was on top of it um he said and i think it's important to know i think everyone knows any homeless person that's encountered by a surf city police department they are asked can i take you to a homeless shelter if it's a female can i take you to a female only homeless shelter and 99.9 percent of the times um, they're turned down so um, but he said he was on top of it and the reason I bring it to you is because you all are the leaders of Surf City and the town is a reflection of the leadership of Surf City so if it's me or Surf City residents or people coming into the town and that's the first thing they see is a homeless in uh, beginning stages of a homeless encampment they're gonna ask themselves like what happened to Surf City like where's the leadership um, so that's why I think it's important to bring it up today just from what I've experienced and other people have experienced why we moved to Surf City we feel like it's a good clean safe place to live last thing I'll say done with homeless people Easter Sunday uh, you guys get you guys charge parking for Easter Sunday. I think maybe next year, 2025, something to think about free beach parking Easter Sunday. That's all. Sherman Sandlin. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and Town Council. Um, I stand before you today deeply concerned about the recent actions of the councilman and um, the printing and distribution of the t-shirt mocking our beloved surf, beloved surf city as Shugart City is not only immature but also deeply um, disrespectful to our community. As a citizen of Surf City, I find it disturbing that someone in a position of leadership would stoop to such levels of immaturity 
It reflects poorly of the integrity and character required to lead our town efficiently and effectively. Therefore, I respect, respectfully urge Councilman Sugar to consider resigning from his position, and if he chooses not to do so, I implore the board to initiate the necessary steps to relieve him of his duties as town councilman. In closing, I want to emphasize that as citizens, we deserve leaders who uphold the values and respects, um, values of respect, dign dignity, and maturity. Let us not allow such behavior to tarnish the reputation of our community any further. Thank you for your time and attention to this matter. Andy Pyle. I thought they all came to listen to me again. Um, thank you, Carla, for including my uh, comments in the minutes. I appreciate that. Thank you for your response to the FOI request. Uh, today, the council approved the minutes from the last meeting. Okay, I think there's my, maybe a, a small error in there that I think the council should fix. In the minutes just approved, the actions reflect a vote on the item, but the documents signed by the mayor and council also changed a different part of the ordinance. Remember, we changed 1618B to get rid of the CAC, but we didn't change 1618A. Why is this important? Well, 1618A changes the onus of the right-of-way clearing from the offending person, the person who put something in the right-of-way, to the person who lives next door to the right-of-way, the adjacent property owner. Now, it might not seem like a lot, but that's a due process question. So, other sections of Ordinance 16, specifically 16-17, 16-3, Section C, and Section D, and Section 16 4, uh, Part B, either places the violation on the property owner, which, remember, the town has claimed that they own the right-of-way, so the onus goes on the town, or the responsible person, the person who actually put the encroachment or put the... Uh, the obstacle in that right of way. And absent being able to demonstrate that it was the adjacent property owner that did that, but that's possible, you can do that, but you may not always be able to do it, uh, you really can't violate them. Now, once the right of way is cleared, absent any expenditure of funds by the city to do so, and that's what uh, the change to Section A does, then we can put parking there using the maintenance budget from the parking uh, pot of money without approval. It's part of maintenance. So we can create parking spaces without it ever coming back to council or ever coming back to the citizens. And I think that end around isn't fair. I think if we're going to make more parking by clearing the right of way, we ought to talk about that. All right. I think the council should go back look at this issue, bring it back, and let's, let's have another public interaction about how to best implement the right-of-way ordinance. I gave the, the mayor uh, a document today, actually three documents, describing the issues, the recommendations, and the solution on how we can make the right-of-way ordinance work for us as opposed to become a contentious issue uh, amongst our community members. So with that, I'm done, and I got 18 seconds for next week or next month. <laughs> Michael Hill. Michael Hill. James Conway. Good afternoon, evening. I'll be brief because I appreciate your time. Um, I'll share a quick fact. Because uh, I know somebody referenced service members, and I, I appreciate that, having several in my family, my community. I don't know if everyone knows this in the room, but I was a police officer with the city of Wilmington PD um, from 2001 until roughly 2015, with the bulk of that time being as a volunteer. And I didn't get paid a cent to do it. I did it because I felt a civic duty that was kind of garnered for me from my grandfather, who died on a fire call in uh, Haddon Heights, New Jersey. So 
I have instilled in me uh, a, a commitment to service, not only for, for monetary reasons, but specifically when it comes to donating your time. I am very happy to call Surf City home because of the folks in front of me, the folks behind me, and the brothers in blue that are making sure nothing happens in this room right now. I'm proud of the chief, the predecessor chief, who I actually turned down to become uh, an auxiliary officer here because I just kind of wanted to enjoy home for a little while. I'm going to leave you with a quote that I think uh, NC State fans may recognize. I just got one last thing. I urge all of you, all of you to enjoy your life, the precious moments you have, to spend each day with some laughter and, to, and thought just to get your emotions going. Jimmy Valvano, go pack. M. Padishaw. Hello. Uh, my issue is, or I actually have a question, and it's regarding um, last month's minutes. Let me get my glasses on here. So I've been following the right of way project, the clearing project, and waiting till it comes to my neighborhood and figuring out which zone I am and you know how it's all going to play out because of safety and because of uh, first responders. Unfortunately, I witnessed a drowning, and if first responders hadn't have gotten there in time, you know they wouldn't have been able to to try to help this gentleman. So I'm following that, and I realized in la last month's minutes that several collector roads are exempted from enforcement. That's my understanding of it, so correct me if I'm wrong. And the collector's roads are named as North New River, North Topsail, North Shore, Roland, South Topsail, and South Shore. So there's six named. So to me, that's a majority of zone one through three and includes a good part of the central business district. So this to me is an area with the greatest congestion. It's more public. It has hundreds of pedestrians, if not thousands, you know, on busy days. So the areas with the greatest interaction seems to have the greatest risk, but they're exempted. And cul-de-sacs, which I'm on, are not. And you know, we have about a dozen people walk by a day. So my question is why not focus on the collector roads or the business district instead of pocket communities. Thank you. David Pettishaw. Good afternoon. David Pattishaw, I'm at 12 West Ridge, Surf City. Uh, first off, I want to thank you all for your service. I know it's a thankless job. Um, you know, you catch more grief than you do. Kudos, but I think that most of us appreciate the job that you do. Uh, with that being said, I did have some concerns as far as the minutes from the last meeting and uh, just some of the discussions I've had with neighbors. And the, the idea that an adjacent property owner could be responsible for um, for clearing a property next door. You know, something. It just seems. Uh, it seems that some of this stuff was not put in the in the in the minutes or voted upon, and I could be wrong about this, and I'm sure someone will correct me if that's the case. Uh, I, I welcome that. Um, but if that is the case, then it just seems uh, it seems like a back door, and it seems. To me, um, public service, the biggest part of public service is you know you're, you're going to catch a lot of, a lot of grief, uh, but the biggest thing that you have, the covenant that you have with the people that you serve, is the trust, is the trust. And if we're doing things that, that ruin that trust, then it creates an adversarial relationship, uh, and it makes it difficult to go forward. Um, I just urge that any, any, sort, of, uh, any sort of actions regarding the, the right-of-ways and everything, that we do engage in a full public discussion. Um, 
I've been to a couple of a couple of council meetings or a couple of meetings regarding some other issues, and it seems like by the time it gets to the public comments portion, the deal's already done. You know, you're just expressing your your disappointment with something or or how you would dis disagree on it. But it seems to me that a lot of times that the decision of which way something's going to go uh, has already been made. But again, um, I just want to thank you for all that you do for listening and hopefully we can just have good discourse going forward. Thanks. Desiree Taron. Desiree Taron, 105B Anchor Drive, Surf City. Um, I just wanted to come and voice a couple of small concerns, could be big but small um, in my mind to start. I am a realtor in the area. I do sell real estate um, in the canal streets and everywhere else. Um, I have listened today as there's been some concerns about some discussions that were being made by fellow people within our community. Um, I would like to raise concerns when, for instance, when things are said that a certain area of our town is the ghetto or a certain area of our town is not looked upon well by the town council, I would like to reiterate that that affects your ability to sell in your area and stuff as well. I personally do not see that the town does that. I think the council does a great job. I think that you work tirelessly, um, that we can't even begin to understand the hours that you put in. That being said, um, I do think that it would be wise if certain people within our community took into consideration what they're saying. Also, I do want to say we all have the right to our own opinion. We have the right to say whatever it is we feel. That being said, if you don't like what somebody else does, you can't get hurt on that. You have to take it both ways. You have to realize that there's two people ta talking. And just like one person had an opinion, there's potentially other people that had an opinion just because you don't like it. I do not think that it warrants somebody stepping down from a town council. Um, I don't know if I'm the first person to say that, has stepped outside for a minute to take a call, but I will say that somebody giving an opinion is, in my mind, at any point in time, not constitute them stepping down from a seat, because I guarantee you every single person sitting up there has an opinion and has told somebody at some point in time how you felt about something. I also looked at the shirt. I do not find it to be offensive. It doesn't say anything about Surf City being bad. It doesn't say it, it's just a play on words so if that's how you take it then that's within your your own right to take it that way as well again I'm gonna say it again I don't think that there's any reason that we should be asking for town council members to step down given that they submit the time and they have the right to an opinion just like all of us standing here that's all that's all. Okay. Thank you. Um, before we move forward, I, if I could call on Chief Voorhees to come up for a second and give a comment on our homeless um, in Surf City. Miss Allen left, but uh, I did have a discussion with her. She was she had some concerns, and I addressed those concerns. Every year, the town of Surf City, we see some transient population that comes through, um, and we're well versed in the rights of every person, no matter if they're homeless or not. Uh, and I want everybody to realize that just because a person may look a certain way, uh, act a certain way, uh, stand or sit on a public sidewalk does not mean that's against the law. I cannot take action against someone that's standing on a public sidewalk. I can't so take action so against someone that's laying on a public sidewalk if they're not committing a crime. We, do have, to, we have taken steps to uh, offer help to these people, and I've gone to great lengths to try to convince these uh, homeless people in town to actually accept that help and personally gone and talked to them. Uh, we've reached out to the Council of Governments um, and had actually had caseworkers come in. They've made contact with these homeless individuals and are trying actively trying to find housing for them and get them to accept the help we're offering. Um, I have to abide by the bounds of the law, and I can't step outside that. We're, and I'm not willing to violate anyone, anyone's civil rights because of the way they look or act or if they're homeless or not. Um, we are on top of it. If someone's going to break the law, we will be there to hold them accountable. If they're not, then we will offer the help that we think they need. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.
Um, we are moving forward to public hearing and I am going to call on Carla to present the annexation on Tom LLC. Okay, we have a contiguous annexation position received from Tom LLC for 9.48 acres located at 209 North Alina Court in Hampstead, which is also adjacent to Magnolia Reserve subdivision. Uh, Pender County PIN is 4225647384000. There is certificate of sufficiency and a resolution to set the public hearing today. The hearing has been advertised as required. Notification was sent to all adjacent property owners. Um, I can answer any questions that I can, and then I believe the attorney for the property owner was going to be here today. I'm not sure if he is. <clears throat> so and, and now I need a motion to open the public hearing. I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. A second. I second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed same sign. Motion carries. We are now in public hearing. So if anyone would like to step forward and discuss anything concerning the annexation of Tom LLC, pin number 2256473840000, now is your time. <coughs> You would please state your name and address. My name is John Carroll. I live at 209 North Alina Court in Hampstead. And uh, I'm just curious, is, is there a proposal? Is there a drawing of what they expect to do on this property? I know that, you know, they're the same owners who own Magnolia Reserve who are developing that property. But I am literally in the center of this 12 acres that they have bought and plan to develop. So I would just like to see what's going to happen with that property is there any form of that do you guys have any of that for us to see and what is the you know ability to make this not happen <laughs> as it were because you know depending on how this plays out i'm going to be in the tent next to the lady that this lady back here is complaining about you know just like just like her i grew up here i'm not wealthy as some folks are and you know, we we worked real hard for our little piece of heaven here in Surf City, and uh, I'm just concerned what's happening around me is going to shove me out. So, is there any any you know visual that we can see Not what their have plan is? Their intentions at this point of what they plan to do with the land at this time, it's just asking to be annexed into the town. Okay, well, what does that mean for my address, considering the fact that they're using it to get this annexation? And that's because through Pender County GIS, your that property was subdivided at some point, and so it still carries the same address, but it it was not your property, so okay. it, sh it will not touch or affect your property per se. Okay. The pin number is not his property. Right. Correct. Okay. Very good. So you are not being annexed in. No. Your personal property is not being annexed in. Right. It's just the what touches it. The surrounding property is asking for it. Okay. So is there a vote for this annexation? Do, we, do us as the homeowners who whose property touches this, do we get to say no? <laughs> and if so, does it do us any good? Or like the other gentleman said, has this, this already been, you know, d d <laughs> decided? Nothing has been decided on. Just Just for example, myself years ago where i live at now my property was annexed into the town of surf city right so when i, when I purchased it it was in the town of surf city has the land been developed out of 50 acres there's three homes there right you know the purchaser his intentions you know more than likely his intentions are going to be to develop it yeah, I mean, if they're going to continue guess, you know, Magnolia Reserve. To, but we have not been presented a map. They have to go through the steps of annexation before moving forward with what they plan to do. Okay, very good. But it is not your property being annexed in. With forced annexation is not allowed in the state, in the state of North Carolina. Understood. All right, thanks.
Is there anyone else that would like to speak in public during this public meeting? Stanley Griffin, 301C Mandalay Court. Just a quick question. How is this property currently zoned? What's the zoning on it? And is it going to stay that way? Or, or have they asked for any type of zoning change? I guess that would happen after the annexation. You want me to jump in, Mayor? <clears throat> so the, the property that's being requested to be annexed is in Pender County. So there's currently Pender County zoning on that property. I just pulled it up. It's residential performance. So the process in which is being followed is the annexation portion. It then will go to planning board for a recommendation on zoning, and then council will apply zoning based on the future land use classification that is identified in our comprehensive plan. So that zoning process will take place, and then if the property owner desires to develop, they will have to come through the normal process of developing their property. So normally you would follow what the existing zoning is per the county, or uh, is no, that off, it, of the, no, off, the off the long range No, the planning plan? staff is going to recommend that zoning be applied based on the recommendations of the town of Surf City's future land use map, which is in our comprehensive plan. Thank you. You're welcome. And it, it did go to planning board for a recommendation, okay. which I was trying to verify. But I believe it was R10, yeah. Amy. Okay. Yeah, it was R10. Sorry. There you go. R10. So it's it's is a comparable, yep. a comparable zoning to what it was for the county. Yes, sir. Um, these folks are asking for annexation into Surf City. Um, I am assuming that the purpose of it is to develop the property for residential use, or is that? Most, yes, I, most people do um, want to come into Surf City for water, sewer, our setbacks. Do we have so capacity forth. for that? Um, we are putting people on a list for sewer. So at this point, we do not have capacity to grant a building permit. If they were to go through the whole process, they would still not be able to build until capacity was. That's correct. And, and a development proposal has not been presented or brought forward. Okay. I know our capacity is, is yeah, an issue. Yeah, yeah. And, and in order to even get on a, a potential list, you have to go through the process of bringing forth a development proposal and getting that approved through the appropriate channels. Understood. Thank you. It could be, it could be years before that gets developed. Would anyone else like to speak during this public hearing? Now is your chance if you'd like to speak during this public hearing. Last call. <laughs> All right, can I have a motion to close public hearing? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Can I have a second? A second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We are out of um, public hearing. So it is requested that the Town of Surf City consider approving this annexation um, as presented. Is there any discussion? If not, can I have a motion to move forward with accepting this annexation? I'll make a motion to move forward to accept this as presented. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries to remove, move forward with annexation. Uh, moving forward to old biz, we have no old business. So new business is a budget ordinance amendment for a beach nourishment fund 81. And I will call on our town manager, Kyle Brewer, to present. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and good afternoon. And um, good afternoon to everybody in, in the audience. Um, before you is a budget ordinance amendment to uh, set aside funds for uh, what we're calling a, an immediate uh, request for sand replacement 
Uh, that was lost due to some of the storms that we experienced in early February. Uh, discussed this project uh, at the work session, um, but the repairs uh, to essentially cover the latter part of the 900 block down to uh, the midpoint of the 1100 block of South Shore uh, consist of a uh, minor truck haul project to add approximately 5,500 cubic yards. Uh, that cost is uh, estimated at approximately 280000 so that's what the budget ordinance amendment would be for, and it would essentially just create the ability to expend these funds out of the beach nourishment fund. Does anyone have any discussion concerning this truck haul project? It is my understanding that if it is approved, it will begin and uh, end, it would have to end before May 1st. And before May 1st, um, that's based on the sea turtle moratoriums for uh, having any work to be done on the beach. All work will be done uh, uh, higher than high tide. Um, so actually in my report, I was gonna report that we received our permit modification today from coastal management. Um, so we will be moving forward. And yes, as you were mentioning, it'll be completed within the month. <coughs> the, Does this have any impact on our um, Army Corps project? Uh, no, this project will not. And, and I've been in communication with Army Corps um, about this uh, just to, to verify if anything. It's such a minor amount of, of sand volume. Um, again, we're talking about millions of cubic yards with the Army Corps project. This is 5,500 uh, cubic yards. So. Uh, if anything is, is uh, remaining, they will just factor that into the overall volume of sand uh, calculated for the core project, but um, very highly doubtful that it's going to have an impact in regards to volume. And it's my understanding it's really a safety issue because of this specific spot, right? I mean, it's well, there's there's a vulnerability of, of structures, and then um, you know, secondary to that, uh, not in order of importance, but okay. you you ha you don't have access to the beach. The public access you cannot get uh, beyond the escarpment. Okay. Um, I mean, you can you can maybe jump down, but you're not getting back unless you go to another access. So, a very isolated uh, project. Any further discussion? If not, do I have a motion to move forward with this budget ordinance amendment for the Beach Nourishment Fund 81? I'll make a motion to move forward with this ordinance amendment for Fund 81. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. <coughs> motion carries to move forward with the budget amendment. Um, item number two is the that subdivision preliminary map, and I will call on Amy Combs to present. Good afternoon. Um, this is going to feel repetitive, but in your packet tonight is a request for the approval of a major subdivision. The ordinance defines a major subdivision as any subdivision that does not meet the requirements of an exempt minor or minor expedited subdivision. Um, the subject property is identified on Pender County GIS as 4236-40-4769-0000. In January of 2022, the owner requested to subdivide the tract into three parcels. This process was completed through a minor expedited process. The subdivision resulted in the creation of two half acre lots leaving the remainder intact. In January of 2023, the parent parcel was again divided. The property was subdivided to create a two acre home site. At this time, it is requested to subdivide the property once again to create an additional one acre lot. The lot will have direct connection to Belt Road um, and will be served by Pender County Water and will have to get a septic permit. Um, the reason it's, y'all have heard this a few times is I've been before you, I think five times now um, to subdivide off or four times to subdivide off pieces. So this new piece is this one acre tract. It exceeds their R10 zoning requirements, um, fronts the road. So it does not require any additional improvements when the back portion comes in to be subdivided. If that comes forward, then that would be, um, would require roadway improvements and, and all of those things. But for this, it is a simple one acre tract being taken off of a larger overall tract. Does anyone have any questions?
Anyone have any questions for Amy? No. All right, hearing no questions, do I have a motion to approve the BAT subdivision preliminary plat? I'll make a motion to approve that as presented. Do I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Amy. All right. We will move to Cal Brewer to present us with the manager's report. Uh, thank you again, Mayor and Council, and um, those in the audience. I've uh, got several uh, projects to report on. Um, first, I'll start off with their uh, South Shore stormwater project. Um, so over the last month, uh, we've seen significant progress on that project. Uh, crews with Sunland Builders have been focused on the site at 1815 South Shore, and will soon be moving on to the 2201 uh, project site. Uh, we do have a scheduled visit to the site on Thursday. Uh, that'll be an opportunity to learn more about the system and its benefits to the community. Uh, it'd be our hope that uh, success of this project can be uh, replicated in other parts of town. Um, so it's important for us to kind of understand that and, and how it's going to function, et cetera, when it's actually in the ground. Um, not part of that project, but certainly related um, is the DOT work that's uh, being undertaken. Uh, along South Shore from basically the S curve down to uh, Topsail Beach Town Line. Um, they are working on the mill patching right now, which is to pull out the, uh, some of the old asphalt and, and uh, rough spots. Um, and then they will continue that until that portion of it is completed. And then once that is done, uh, the contractor will move directly into wedging and then resurfacing uh, of South Shore. Um, and then they are anticipated to finish up uh, before the uh, what they say, the, the beach season, uh, I think that's here today, but uh, Memorial Day essentially is their deadline on that project. Uh, town staff will be holding its third uh, community meeting on Thursday evening from 5.30 to 7.30 here at Town Hall. Um, we will be reviewing again uh, the sewer, uh, sewer program, the sewer rate fees, as well as giving an overview of the new stormwater utility, uh, which will be a, a division of our overall public utilities department. Uh, on Friday, the town will be holding the official groundbreaking ceremony for the Earl G. and Inez Bats Recreation Complex. Um, the community, everybody is invited uh, to participate in the event. Um, and then we will welcome everybody at the community center afterwards uh, for refreshments and to view the plans of the new park. Um, so we do hope to see you there. Again, that's Friday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, at the new Earl G. and Inez Bats Recreation Complex right off of uh, J.H. Bats Road. Uh, I'd like to uh, just thank, uh, again, uh, council and, and department heads for um, the lengthy uh, budget presentations uh, that you heard at the last work session. Uh, department heads did a good job at uh, highlighting some of the programs and services they provide, as well as reviewing their requests for the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, the, di the finance director and I continue to evaluate the budget and look forward to bringing forward a recommendation uh, to the council at your April work session. Um, Evelyn and, and Michael already uh, discussed mural number two. Um, again, we anticipate that project to start April 18th and that'll last about 30 days at the, at the most. Um, the emergency services boat lift, um, which has been out of commission since uh, before Hurricane Florence, um, that project has essentially been completed um, Chief was reporting actually to me today that uh, by the end of the week we anticipate to have the gate uh, back up and um, put that back in service. So we'll want to hold another ribbon cutting uh, ceremony uh, for the boat lift um, over there in Soundside Park. That's just another asset for our emergency services to respond when needed. Um, again, uh, the beach repair work. Uh, just today I received an email from Division of Coastal Management on the permit modification, which is necessary. Um, and once we can nail down the exact dates for work to commence, we'll get that back out to the residents of that area. Um, direct mailers did go out uh, several weeks ago so that they, they should be aware of that. Um, and then lastly, uh, just wanted to, to thank everybody that came out uh, to help celebrate the 75th anniversary of the town. Um, I remain humbled to be a part of the, uh, that process and, and to be able to celebrate with everybody. Uh, the weather certainly was not perfect uh, for us, 
Um, but we did have a good turnout, and uh, as, as Mickey had mentioned, the exhibit was, uh, it was wonderful. Staff did an excellent job at that. Um, but also to the residents of the town um, and council for donating items uh, to contribute to that um, and just to contribute to the history of, of this great city. So uh, we'll continue to celebrate the milestone throughout the year, and I hope we can uh, incorporate some more 75th anniversary elements into everything that we do. And uh, we grab some leftover pennants and, and put them out here. So if there are a stack over there, um, grab one on your way out. Um, and then uh, to the Pata Shawls, uh, I'll get your contact information and somebody will be in contact with you to update you about the right of way, et cetera, just so you have that clarification. That's all I have, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Trudy, you wanna start? Yeah. Um, oh, it's attorney, I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought it was attorney next. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay, no, no report, attorney. thank you, Mayor. <laughs> no report, okay. All right, Trudy, it's your turn. Oh, okay, that was quick. Um, <laughs> I, I also want to thank all the department heads. Uh, the budget process is 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 a a big. I mean, it's just so much. It's everything. It's, it's so encompassing, and we spent hours here uh, a, a couple weeks ago. And I just think that the department heads did such a great job of um, compiling all the information and giving us more than enough to um, to understand their scope of work and um, you know what's what our town is. We're growing so much, and we have so many needs, and we certainly want to be responsible with all the funds coming in. And and we can't, you know, probably fulfill every uh, request. But um, I feel like they did an excellent job providing us the information that we that we needed to to make good decisions with our funds. Um, I also excited about the new mur mural, and I appreciate the beautification committee working hard on that and and taking that so seriously and working with such um, finding great artists to choose from and, and working uh, doing a good job of that. I also commented on the 75th anniversary. I was I just thought it was lovely, and there were a lot of contributors to that event. There were town employees who worked on it hard, but there were a lot of outsiders who contributed um, items, and I think that just made it so special. And I wish and hope that we can find ways to uh, repeat things like that, um, have things be permanently displayed one day. Uh, I don't know. I just, it was really impressive. And it made everybody uh, want to see and do more like that. And I appreciate anything that we can do that is positive in our environment. It helps us um, unify and just celebrate our history and um, our neighbors. And so I was excited to be a part of that. Um, one comment I'll make, uh, I know it is parking season again, and I just wanted to remind residents that we have to go back and re repeat our, our, our passes. And so I know some people don't realize that sometimes, but we have to do that every year. And so I just wanted to remind people to please go take care of that so you don't get a ticket. <laughs> so thank you. Mr. Hugh. The, um, I'd also like to thank the grounds crew guys. I do think they do a wonderful job. I'm very excited about this stormwater project on 210. I really want to see how this is going to work, and I'm hoping it's going to be a, a great success. We've fought that battle for a while, and uh, maybe we've actually got a, something that's going on that'll be worthwhile as far as helping correct that issue. Uh, one other thing, I, I, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. It just, uh, man, we live in such a great place uh, in a country, a state, in a city where so many people can come up here and you can voice your opinion on whatever side of the coin you're on. I mean, you gotta remember, there's a lot of people that don't live live that way and uh, if you're not grateful, I, I, you should be. Um, last thing, big weekend this weekend. If you're not an NC State fan, I need you to kinda just <coughs> help me out. Saturday night, it's gonna be good. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, but hey man, you know, just all I'm asking for is a weekend. Hey, I pulled for the Tar Heels, though. Well, I didn't really pull for them, but I didn't oh, pull was, against them. Oh, I didn't pull oh, against okay. them. Thank you. <laughs> I want to start off by um, Ms. Tucker, Mr. Blevins. I know Mr. Rice left, and I want to sincerely apologize um, that I um, uh, offended you in any way, or there was any offense to you in any way. It was never my intentions, or there was never the intentions of this. Um, and I think none of us have intentions ever anything. I do want to remind uh, all of us, and I hope you can accept my apology for that. Um, you know, no council member, um, no citizen, 
um, should badger, uh, intimidate, insult, slander another council member, their spouse, or their children. I think the First Amendment was spoke about, and that goes both ways for all of us today, all of us. And, uh, you know, the only thing I ask is if you have a, an issue with something that allegedly that I do, then the respectful thing is to contact me, talk to me, and ask me what's going on. Because a lot of things get stored in this day and age from the next person over. And I think the most respectful thing would have been for anybody is just to call me up so personally and say, hey, I need to talk to you about this situation because that's how we operate. Six and a half years I've dedicated to this town, my time and energy, as a lot of you have. Ms. Tucker, as you have, out there street, sweeping the stand off the streets. I've watched you do it. And Mr. Blevins, the same with you. And I have respect for all of you that, that do those things. But I think at the end of the day, I don't want to forget, we all are held to a very high standard. All of us. All of us. And I want the same respect to given to me that you, I want that same respect given to me that you, you expect me to give to you. I think that's a fair thing to ask. And so once again, I sincerely apologize if I offended not just you guys, anybody else. I offended anybody else, uh, okay? Because I, I, uh, that was not the intention. And if you, at the end of the day, you want to make, you want to have fun with something. You know, how many times do you get smacked in the head, back of the head, if your kid is at school and he gets smacked in the back of the head, how many times before he turns around and punches the person? Just curious. Anybody? Three, four, five, six times? You know, and as people say, well, you're held to a high standard, aren't you? You're held to a high standard, and you are. I think we all are. I was speaking. Thank you. I'm sorry. So I think at the end of the day, I know, Ms. Tucker, you said I apologize to anybody that took that offensively. I tried to turn something that was ridiculous, and I tried to turn it into something lighthearted and fun. And if it was ever, I think that if, if that was taken that way, I apologize. So anyway. Uh, thank you for thank you for all of you for being here and everything that you say means a lot and I appreciate your time and I appreciate this council and uh, their support. I know that we work hard every day to serve you, so thank you all. Appreciate it, Mr. John. Okay, well, I see they left, but uh, the Cub Scout Troop Seven Seven Seven. Thank them for coming. Um, thank the Parks and Rec and Special Events Committee for all the work they did on our walk through the museum. If none of, none of you had a chance, the opportunity to go through there, you missed out on a really great thing. It's really, really, it was really put together well. It's really nice. Uh, I'd be leaving her out if I didn't highlight Jessica. She's one of our part-time employees and she really went up, above and beyond the call of duty putting these things together. Everybody else, of course, helped. I appreciate everybody that came out from all the different committees to help out, all the town workers, some of the people, uh, the things that were donated. I was there on Sunday and was a docent for the World War II stuff that was donated by the Kirkland family. Unbelievable. It was a uniform for the United States Marines. It even had a vial of Iwo Jima sand that you could see because that gentleman obviously served on that, uh, that battle and thank God survived as many didn't. Um, Parks and Rec Committee and the Special Events Committee did the Easter egg hunt on Saturday. I was there because that's what I do. Anyways, a lot of people came out. There was, it seemed like thousands of kids. They had a ball. We put down 14,000 eggs, and they were cleaned up in a minute. I said, well, if we could get those kids to come back and pick <laughs> stones up and paper yeah, and reward them some way, that would be good because they did it in record time. I think it was not even five minutes on each field they picked up. Um, last but not least... The gentlemen that do our roads and grounds and facilities, give them big kudos because I tell you what, uh, you know, I, I run across them all the time. They do a great job as every single employee of this town does. They go over and above the call of duty from those guys up to anybody that works for the town. It's, it's, uh, it's, it always amazes me. I came from two other areas and I've never seen anything put out like this for this town with the small amount of people we have. Last but not least, gone through two major wars, World War I, World War II, 
uh, greatest generation fought World War II. I'm a little bit of a history buff. Fought for us, fought for us goes back to the Revolutionary War, that we have the right of free speech. And that goes two ways. That doesn't mean that somebody has a higher office or is supposed to be held to a higher degree, that they can't use that full, full you know, free speech. That's what it is, you know? And if somebody wants to change that, I don't think they're going to have too much fun changing it or anything that happened in this country that's going to change that. But as long as we operate with our Constitution and we have free speech, have at it. And if you don't have a good enough sense of humor to back off on that or try to turn that around to change it into something else for your own personal gain, that's fine. But, you know, don't, uh, don't start the ball rolling if you're not ready to handle what's going to come back your way. Thank you. And thanks for coming out tonight, by the way. Thank you. Alicia? Um, first off, super excited about the ribbon cutting for our new park. So I hope we have a great turnout for that because that's an amazing thing that we have going on to the town that um, a lot of people have worked really hard to make happen. So please make sure you come to that. The um, sewer and stormwater program that we have going on is an informational thing. And I got to come to one of them. Um, the guys did a great job actually fielding questions. So if you are trying to figure out what's happening with our sewer or what's happening with our potential stormwater plan, I, I encourage you to come out and ask questions. These guys are a wealth of knowledge and that's part of, of what you ask of us is to be transparent and get you information. And um, they not only have an evening time, but they have a morning time. So we did everything I think in our power to make sure that that was available to everybody. So. Um, if you don't come ask questions, then just know that after decisions are made, you can't really say anything about it at that point. So make sure you come out, get educated. And then um, to the chief, you know, homelessness is, is not a fun thing. Um, I, I love that you take care of people. My grandmother was homeless for a while, so thank you for treating people with respect because that's important too. So that's it. Thanks. You're right. You're right. Uh, it'll be Thursday evening, starting at 5.30. You're welcome. I just want to jump back in for one second because with all the stuff that I had to deliver, I, f I completely forgot about our park. I didn't forget about it because if Jody heard me say forget about it, she'd whack me one. But, um, you know, I've been working on that park for a long time. Buddy Fowler's back there. He's one of the key ones that started the Parks and Rec Committee. We've been working on this. George Howard's back there. He's wanting to have a skate park in this town. What? 30 years, 30 years, <laughs> give or take. It's coming. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if you have the opportunity to come out and check it out for Friday, you should come out. Not too much walking around you can do, but you can actually see what the vision's coming through. It's coming through, and it's going to be great. And kids will love it. People will love it. Town will love it. Thank you. Right. Well, everybody said what I was going to say, but <laughs> I, I do want to um, emphasize on – the 75th, Carla and the staff did an amazing job putting it together. Um, One person that had a instrumental history here in Surf City is here with us today, Mayor, former Mayor Doug Medlin. Um, he participated in the event. We thank you well as Councilman, former Councilman Buddy Fowler. We appreciate you. Um, the, the skate park is going to be awesome. There's a lot of um, local shops here in Surf City where you need to go get your skateboards and your helmets, start practicing. Um, <laughs> we're going to be out um, breaking ground on Friday and hope that you join us. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to end this in reading to you. And you, you may get bored and you might like just say, oh, my God. But I'm going to read to you. This is the purpose of this code of ethics is to establish guidelines for ethical standards of conduct for the town, of, town council and to help determine what conduct is appropriate in particular cases. It should not be considered a substitute for law or for a board member's best ju judgment. Board members should obey all laws applicable to their official actions as members of the board. 
board members should be guided by spirit as well as a letter of the law in whatever they do. At the same time, board members should feel free to assert policy positions and opinions without fear of re repercussal from fellow board members or citizens. To declare that a board member is behaving unethical unethically because one disagrees with the board member on the question of policy and not because the board member's behavior is unfair, dishonest, irresponsible, and itself unethical. Board members should endeavor to keep up to date through the board's attorney and other sources about new and ongoing legal and ethical issues that may face in their official positions. This education function is in addition to the day-to-day -day legal advice the board may receive concerning specific situations that arise. Board members should endeavor to keep up to date through the board's attorney and other sources about the most pertinent constitutional, statutory, and other legal requirements which they may must be familiar to meet their legal responsibilities. Board members should act with integrity, independence from improper influence as they exercise their duties of their offices, adhering firmly to a code of sound values, behaving consistently with respect toward everyone within they would interact with, exhibiting trustworthiness, living as if they are on duty as elected officials regardless of where they are and what they are doing, using their best independent judgment to pursue the common good as they see it, presenting their opinions to all in a reasonable, forethought, consistent manner, remaining incorruptible, self-governing, and unaffected by improper influence at the same time being able to consider the opinions and ideas of others, disclosing contacts and information about issues that they receive outside of public meetings, and reframing from seeking or receiving information on quasi-judicial judicial matters outside of the proceedings themselves, treating other board members in public with respect and honoring the opinions of others, even when the board members disagree with the opinions, not reaching conclusions on issues until all sides have been heard, showing respect for their offices and not behaving in ways that reflect badly on their offices, recognizing that they are a part of a larger group and acting accordingly, recognizing that the individual board members are not generally allowed to act on behalf of a board, but may only do so if a board specifically authorizes it and the board must take official act action as a body. Board members should avoid and exercise the official duties. Their official actions should be above reproach. Although opinions may vary about what behavior is inappropriate, the board will consider in terms of whether the reasonable person who is aware of all and re of the re relevant facts and circumstances surrounding the board member's actions would conclude that the action was inappropriate. If a board member believes that his or her actions, while legal or ethical, may be misunderstood, the member should seek the advice as the board's attorney and should consider publicly disclosing the facts of the situation as steps taken to resolve it. Board members should faithfully perform their duties of the office. They should act as the especially responsible citizens whom others can trust and respect. They should be set a good example for others in the community, keeping in mind that they trust and respect con con is continually to be earned. Board members should faithfully attend and prepare for meetings. They should carefully analyze all credible information properly submitting to them, mindful of the need not to engage in communications outside the meeting. They should demand full accountability from those over whom the board has authority. Board members should be willing to bear their fair share of the board's workload to the extent appropriate. They should be willing to put forth the board's interest ahead of their own. Board members should conduct the affairs of the board in an open and public manner. They should comply with all applicable laws governing open meetings and public meetings. Recognizing and doing so is an important way to be worthy of the public's trust. They should remember when they meet that they are conducting the public's business. They should also remember that local government records belong, records belong to the public 
and not to the board members or their employees. To ensure strict compliance with the laws concerning openness, board members should make clear that an environment of transparency is to be maintained at all times in the government unit. They should prohibit unjustice delays in fulfilling public record requests. They should take deliberate steps to make certain that any closed session of this board is conducted and such sessions should stay from the, should, should not stray from the purposes for which they are called. That being said, we had a lot of discussion tonight on uh, actions that um, were taken. Um, and a lot of times people react to something that they hear instead of thinking about it first. I am thankful that you apologized um, to, to the ones that are offended, were offended. Um, when, when, the, when the shirt came out, I, I did call and asked him to stop distributing the shirts, and he did cease um, on distributing the shirts. Um, so I just want us to, I want us to be united. I want this town to be a community. We are Surf City. We are not South Surf City. We're not North Surf City. We are Surf City, and that's the way, you know, we are here to hear you and be a voice for our town. So that being said, um, I just want to just make it clear, we are held to a higher standard. Yes, public speech, you have the right to public comment, but we are held to a higher standard and we need to, to live it every day, so. Um, I hope everybody had a happy Easter. Get your skateboards. Come join us on Friday. Um, okay. The skate park is not built. So, yeah. You might still want to wear a helmet. Um, so with that being said, can I have a motion to adjourn? I will make a motion to adjourn. All those second? Second. What's that? We have a motion. Can I have a second? All second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. <laughs>